Hi, this is Pat with Pat's Two Cents with God's Church of Love. And I want to share something with you. When we go through life's vicissitudes, life's obstacles, life's challenges, you know how some people feel like life just sucks. Well, there are times when we go through stuff and whatever life brings our way, if you start doing the math, you realize that a lot of the most negative experiences you've had in your life have to do with identifying what your major ministry is going to be. Realize you are the only Bible that many of this world will ever read. You're the only Bible. So make sure that your print is legible. Make sure your pages are white. Mm -hmm. Yes, you know what I'm saying. Be careful how you go through what you go through. Be careful the things you say and the things you think and feel. And if you see anything that would exalt itself against the knowledge of Christ rearing its ugly head, ask God to help you with that. Ask God to remove it so that you don't even entertain it or agree with it. Because see what Satan tries to do. This, this is part of his strategy. He wants to position you so that you will turn your back on God. And see, you have to look at everything you go through as an opportunity for blessing to come through it. You got to look at it that way. Sometimes, whoo, this is hitting me right here. One of my friends, they know who they are. One of my friends had an issue with their knee. This beautiful lady, beautiful spirit, beautiful giving spirit, pure as the driven snow. Oh, my goodness. This is a beautiful person, y'all. Does a lot for a lot of people. This person can't stand in lines any longer like they used to. Now, some of you would look at it as a setback. Some of you would look at it like, well, how comes they they a child of God? How comes God doesn't heal them? Well, let me tell you this, baby. There are times God wants, he ordains for you to slow down. Because he knows how he continually wants to use you. And he knows if you don't slow your roll, you are going to wear yourself out which means you will cause the temple of God damage at an early time where the temple of God could no longer be a safe haven for many souls to run to for safety. So God wants to preserve you like salt. We're the salt of the earth. He wants to preserve you because he's got future assignments aligned up lined up for you to fulfill. And you can't fulfill those assignments through a broken down body with a temple that does not function at 100% or 80% for that matter. If you're broke, busted, and disgusted, your doorknobs don't work, your locks don't work, your windows are busted through, all the things are rotten and floors are falling through, Nobody can run to that for safety. The only good is, is good for is demolition. So you want to take care of your bodies as well as living a holy life. So that God can use you to the fullest. You want your spirit to be cleaned of all contaminants. Your mind to be free of all debris from the world. All debris from the flesh resentment, bitterness, anger, frustration, fear, 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 panic, worry. You want to be free of all that. You want to be free of anger and rage. You want to be free of having to be in control of everything. You want to be free of manipulation. You want to be free of your flesh. Because God will not cohabit with sin. So he's preparing each and every one of us. Every day is a day of preparation, whether it's an eventful day or, or an uneventful day. 
Every given moment is an opportunity and every given moment can be a time of failure, depending on how you deal with it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my soul, my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth? Can you imagine God saying that about you or me? There's none like them in the, all, all the earth? That he would brag on you like that? Now, listen, this man was not loaded with sin. This man was not half-stepping. This man, his heart was right before God. And God was bragging on him before Satan. So what you have to look at is sometimes the people that have the most of God's favor, the most of God's love, and where God has lined them up because he's got a tremendous load of blessing coming down the pipe. And you wonder why some good people suffer. All right. Listen to this. Mm. See, I don't like this story. Because I don't like to see anybody suffer. <laughs> All right. Mm -mm -mm. Now, this is what God said. He, he asked him if he considered his servant. Verse 9. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for nothing? <laughs> Has not thou made a hedge about him, about his house? In other words, he said, you got him set up. You got a hedge around him. You got everything. Everything's going for him. Why? I mean, why would he turn his back on you? You stacked the deck in his favor. That's what he's saying in essence. So let me read it out. Hast thou not made a hedge about him? and about his house, and about all that he hath on every side, and has blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now, and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon him put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth, from the presence of the Lord. Think about this, y'all, when stuff starts breaking loose in your life. And you're wondering, what did I do? What did God say about Job? No man on the earth matched him. He was bragging on his son, Job. Hmm. But it didn't exempt him from going through hell, did it? Think about that when you see the next trial come your way. Verse 13, and there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking. And let me stop real quick, you guys. This is for our little church group. I'm having a hard time, you know, finding my space. I'm going to edit all this out, but I'm just explaining to y'all why I seem to be stumbling around. Um, even my throat is trying to close up on me because I'm tired. I just push myself too hard and I apologize. But I'm going to try to do this message some service. I mean, I'm going to try to do it some good. Okay, verse 13. And there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the asses feeding beside them. And the sea beans fell upon them, or the Sabaeans, and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another, when it rains it pours, and said, The fire of God has fallen from heaven, and hath burned up the sheep and the servants, and consumed them, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another, and said, the Chaldeans came out in three bands mm, and fell upon the camels and have carried them away. Yea, slain the servants with the hedge of the sword. And I only am escaped to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And behold, 
there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house and it fell upon the young men and they are dead and I only am escaped to tell thee. And Job arose and rent his mantle and he tore his clothes and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshiped. He didn't cuss, he didn't blame God, he worshiped and said, naked came I out of my mother's womb and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away Blessed be the name of the Lord. Some of y'all would have, wouldn't have blessed him nothing. You would have cursed him out. In all his, in all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. How many of you are charging God foolishly with every little crisis rears its ugly head in your life? God is honing you. He's honing you for his service and he's honing you for blessings. Be honed, y'all. Just go through it. Don't complain. Worship him. Be instant in season and out of season. Worship him. When things go wrong, Lord, I praise your name. I know that you got this under control. I don't get it, but I know that you're doing something and I know that whatever you do, all things work together for my good because that's what your word says. According to your riches and glory, all things work together for my good, period. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. You quote the word against the situation. You bind and rebuke, you shut down, take all authority. And whatever God continues to allow in your life, you worship God, bless his name through it, and know he's working something out. You may not know what it is, but he's working. Sometimes you got a hammer, and sometimes God allows that hammer to come in your life and feel like it being beaten and beaten and beaten and beaten and beaten. But walk through a house that's under construction. Just walk through one or one that's being refurbished and watch all that has to be demolished before the refurbishing takes place. And sometimes that's the way your life feels. Like everything's being ripped apart. Everything's being torn apart. But listen, whatever is coming apart in your life, know that God is doing something. God will not allow Satan to do any more than what God has ordained for his purpose. Purpose, y'all. It all comes down to purpose and your good. God's purpose and your good. That's what it all comes down to. No matter what, you lose a loved one. Someone dies in an accident. Someone dies in a fire. You may think they burned to death. God may have taken them in their sleep before the fire ever took place. Just thank him and praise him. Not for doing the, allowing the harm. Thank him for his purpose in it all. Thank him that you believe that he did not allow your loved one to suffer. Thank him that whatever he did allow was for their soul's salvation. See, there are some people that have to go through a hardness before they can get to the tender side of God. I remember I was in school one day and one of my teachers I worked with was dealing with special ed kids. And she was trying to deal with, you know, certain trouble, you know, behavioral problem kids. And I pulled her aside and the Lord gave me a revelation and said, sometimes you got to show them, and I'm not talking beating up on them. We're talking discipline, y'all. So don't think I'm admonishing abuse. I'm not. 
but what the Lord told me to say as a as an allegory or a, prover a proverb. Sometimes you got to show kids your fist before you let them see your heart. Because there are some kids, if they see your heart too soon, they'll railroad you and run all over you. But they, mur they must first learn to fear you. In other words, they don't know what you're capable of, so they're not going to cross the line because they see something that They've got them a little intimidated there. But once they see that you don't play, later on, you can show them your heart. And they'll stay within their lane dealing with your heart. They won't try to railroad you because now you've got their respect. But see, there are kids that are really hard. And you've got to really be hard with them before you can show them your heart. So... It's the same way with God. There are people that you love in your life. And there are times when God has to come down hard on them in order for their soul to squeak into heaven. Mm -hmm. So it's his love overriding your love. Because your love would not want them to go through anything. But God's love knows they've got to if I'm going to save them. They're not going to get saved if I put them on a gravy train. And then there are some of you who are called of God. You are called to his service. You've been given gifts and callings and, and elections and certain assignments in this world. Certain problems you were created to solve. Certain people you were created to minister to. But you can't minister to them if you haven't gone through anything. How are you going to tell them keep the faith? It's going to be all right if you haven't experienced anything. How are you going to be able to navigate these group of people like the man on the Poseidon and get them to safety through hell and high water, literally through hell, fire, and high water? And, and wading through a bunch of dead bodies to get to it. How are you going to be able to do that if you haven't learned to survive by the power of God and the power of his might? How are you going to learn to tell people what God is able to do in, in their life if you haven't given God a chance to do it in your life? That's the part we don't like, is the fellowship of his suffering. So let me share this real quick. The end of the story with Job is God restored everything, gave him double for his trouble. You think he was doing well before? Oh, he was set for life afterwards because he never complained. His wife even told him, why don't you just curse God and die? Imagine how disgusted she was with all those sores all over his body. Seven years dealing with that crap. Seven years scraping himself because he couldn't take the agony of the sores. Can you imagine that? Some of his friends coming to bring comfort in there, accusing him, wondering what sin he committed. But God had already qualified brother man. He said, hey, ain't nobody on this planet like Job. Let me brag on him. Mm -hmm. So God already knew he had the fortitude. But the bottom line is, no matter what the reason is that you're going through what you're going through, the thing you ought to ask God, what am I to learn from this? Give me scripture, Lord, that at least gives me hope while I'm going through. Lead me to scripture. So my point to you is, even while you're going through, you got the word to help navigate you so that you get that God is saying, this is for your good. I'm working something out over here. Just keep believing in me. Keep trusting in me. Don't give up. 
because your change is coming. Don't be weary in well-doing, for in due season you shall reap if you faint not. Mm. The Lord is on my side. I shall not fear what man shall do unto me. It shall not stand. It shall not come to pass. All these scriptures, that's Isaiah 7, by the way. But all these scriptures, God will begin to lead you to. And he will help you. Hold. He's the one that holds your head above water while you're treading water and you're out of breath and you're exhausted. And then one day he'll teach you how to float. The problem will still be there, but you'll be floating on top of it rather than sinking into it. You won't sink. You won't wither. You won't give in. You won't be overtaken. No, he will help you float on top of the problem. And you will lay back and rest in the Lord. Because the, the better you rest in that water, baby, the better you float. And what God is teaching you is survival skills. He's teaching you navigation. He's teaching you how to get over hurdles, around hurdles, under hurdles, how to pick uh, another method. Maybe your normal methodology is not going to get you through this one. You got to come up with another game plan. God will give it to you if you ask. You need wisdom. God will give you wisdom if you ask. But see, you got to ask, you got to lean, you got to seek, you got to scratch and dig for everything God. And he will get you through it. The fire will not burn you, neither will the water overtake you. You come through unscathed, dry as can be. You be like water off of a duck's back. Nobody could even see that you've been through anything. But you know. God brought you through. God is the one that carried you. God is the one that shed the light in your darkness so you wouldn't have known which way to go. God is the one that intervened and brought help your way. God is the one that brought the rescuers. God is the one that taught you a whole new plan. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to talk long. I probably already have worn out my welcome. But just know that God has got you on this planet to solve problems. God has got you on this planet to meet certain types of needs. And he's got to hone you. The biggest need that I serve in my life is encouraging people. That's my motive gift, exhortation. And I noticed that that has been the most the area of my biggest pain emotionally and psychologically. You see what I'm talking about? There are people who are organized. They've been, it's been drilled into them, maybe beaten into them, but they're organized and they know how to get things done. They know how to, ins they know how to jump over insurmountable, insurmountable odds. Why? Because they had to do it and they can tell you how to do it. A person going through the dark, listen to this, a person going through the dark can tell you, lead you through an area that you can't see anything. Why? Because they know that building. They know the underground tunnels. They know the basement. They know all these different areas. They know the terrain. They know how to get from point A to point B because they've been over it and over it and over it and over it and over it time and time again. Through hook or crook, through dangers, toils, snares, and death even. Through the valley of the shadow of death. They've been through it, baby. They know every turn, every street, every alley to get you to safety because they've had to go through. They've had to cover that ground time and time again. So when you find yourself going through and you're wondering what the heck is God doing? Recognize this has to do with your destiny. Recognize that. Don't lose your faith. Don't give up. Some of you may not have gone through much, but you're going to. 
because that's just what life does. But whatever comes, don't turn your back on God. Seek him that much more. Even if you fail at certain turns, even if your reaction is not godly at the moment, continue to seek God for his wisdom. Continue to seek God for his mercy. And take authority every chance you get. Because there may be some things you can avoid just by taking authority. Uh-uh, Satan, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. No, that's, that's a lie from the pit. I rebuke it. And then you research and find ways to get around. Seek and you shall find. Get all the knowledge you can. Get all the wisdom you can. And with all you're getting, <clears throat> get understanding. Anyway, God will keep you. He will keep you as the apple of, of his eye. But whatever you do, don't turn your back on him when things go dark, when things go haywire, when things go cuckoo, when you want to go cuckoo. Hang on to him that much harder. Whatever you do, stick with him. He'll not only get you through it, but he will use you as a beacon of light to get others through the same obstacles you had to go through. Because you've been there, you've done that. Amen. God bless you.